Ever since you were a small girl, you've been considering that things float in water. And that's awesome, but also really, really subtle. So here, I'll put some water in this pink bowl, and I'll ask you to consider a cube that I've put inside the water. Now, never mind if it's gonna be going up or going down, but here is my cube in the water. It has sides length L, and it is a cube. And you would certainly argue that there are forces on all of the sides. All these horizontal sides have forces on them, but those forces will all cancel. For instance, the water over here is pushing the cube to the left, and the water over here is pushing the cube to the right. The water in front of the cube is pushing the cube back, and the water behind the cube is pushing the cube forward. That all cancels out. There are also forces at the bottom and at the top pushing on the cube, and the beautiful thing is those forces don't cancel because they are different. So I want to call those two forces out. This is what I'll call F1. F1 is going to be, well, it's certainly the pressure at location one times the area of the cube and the force at the bottom, I'm gonna call F2. And that's the pressure at the bottom times the area of the top, or sorry, the area of the bottom of the cube, which is the area of the top of the cube also, but that's not important right here. Then I'm gonna say, well, this is sort of the definition of pressure, right? So there's nothing interesting happening here. This is equal to uh, pressure at the bottom times the area, which is L square, and this is pressure, sorry, pressure at the top times L square, that's the area of the top. Now those pressures are different, right? And the, uh, the interesting thing is you can find out what the pressure is because each of these is at a different height. And we know how pressure depends on depth. In general, in, gen <laughs> in general, pressure at the bottom is going to be pressure at the top plus rho g h, where h is the difference between the top and the bottom. This is how deep it is. And I guess h should be a positive number. So what if I say pressure two is pressure one plus rho g l, where l is how much deeper we are. And all I need to do is have these two pressures compared to one another. So then I can say F2 is, well, it's pressure, oh man, it's pressure one times L square plus pressure, whoa, pressure rho G L times L square. Do you see how I put a, plugged in what pressure two is right here? So this is, oh man, let's put another equal sign here and keep going. This is, wait a second, this, is that. So force two is force one plus rho g, how many L's do we have here? L cubed. L cubed, now L cubed's an interesting thing. L cubed is volume. So the force two is the force one plus rho g L cubed, which is the volume of our cube. I guess what I'm saying here, let me see if I can figure out what I'm saying here. This density, this is the density. Is it the density of my block? Or is it the density of my fluid? Let's see how we originally got rho. This rho was the difference in pressure in the fluid because of varying depths. So it must be the density of the fluid in which we're submerged. And this volume here, this is the volume of the submerged object. This is just baby G. This is volume of submerged object. Or perhaps I should be more careful and call it, yeah, let me call it instead, submerged, I want to, this is a very subtle distinction. I'm gonna say submerged volume of object because I might have a situation where not all of the object is being submerged. So I have to call this the submerged volume of the object. In this case, of course, the volume of the submerged object and the submerged volume of the object are the same thing but that won't always be the case. So I want to now consider the buoyant force and I'm gonna define it for you right now. Force buoyancy is 
equal to the difference between these two forces. And I guess it's going to be an upward force, so I'm going to say that it's the upward force, F2, minus the downward force, F1. So if I say F2 minus F1, that's easy. F2 minus F1 is simply rho GV. Rho GV. The most important thing about this is that this is the fluid. It's the fluid's density, not the object's density. And this is the submerged volume. Submerged volume right there. As long as you understand that, you're going to rock buoyant force. I have two questions for you, two challenge questions using this definition. I'm going to write down the definition again. Buoyant force is rho g v. Here are the questions. There's a guy in a boat. There's a big rock in the boat, too. It's not a severed head. I mean, I guess it could be. So the boat is in a lake, and the lake is near ground, right? Ultimately, there's got to be ground somewhere, and over here there's a flagpole, but that's not important. The question is this. When this guy throws the rock overboard, what happens to the water level of the lake? Does lake height, let's, uh, let's set it up here. One, rise, two, fall, three, not change. Answer in the comments. This is a tricky problem. Here's another problem for you. Oh, I guess that's over. Just kidding. Which, here's my next question, and if you don't understand this, then we should spend some time talking about this. Here's a bowl with some water in it, and let's say that it's the, the water is up to some height h. And here's a bowl with some water in it, and let's say that the water is up to some height h. And here's another bowl, and it has some water in it. This is a very funky one. And it's up to some height h. And the question is, let's see, I'll call this one, two, and three. Which has, no, I'll call it a, b, and c, so you don't confuse it with the other problem. A, B, and C. Which has greatest pressure at the bottom? There's a corollary question that goes with this, but I think it's a very important place to start. Please consider those two problems and solve them.